Hello everyone and welcome to part three where we continue our discussion on the new corridor rehab tools available in Civil 3D 2018. Today's discussion will be on using super elevation within the rehab corridor. I've had several requests for this video over the last few weeks so let's get started. I highly recommend you go back and watch part one and part two of my rehab corridor video series. It'll help you understand how to get started. So I already have my corridor and let's go back and take a look at the rehab parameters. So I'm going to right click and select my corridor. I'm gonna to go to edit rehab corridor, pick a region. I'm just gonna select pick a region cause I only have one region. And just to take a look at my settings, I have an ideal cross slope of minus 2% with a slope tolerance of 2%. We'll worry about that later. We're going to do a mill and overlay where we mill down a minimum of one inch and we replace that milling with an overlay surface of two inches. So let's take a look at the rehab manager report tool and you can see that. So it computes our existing slope of the original ground. We have a column for the ideal slope that I keyed in. And then if the slope tolerance has to do its work, which you can see there's no warnings through here. So the slope tolerance never was activated because you can see here the difference was always less than 2%. But if it did work, it might change my corrected slope to something other than minus two. But in this case, my corrected slope is minus two all the way down, which was my ideal slope for both lanes. And I could also, of course, look at my mill and overlay to look at my milling depths as we go along the sections. But in this case, I'm gonna close that. Let's pretend that the original slope or the existing ground slope through this intersection had flattening. So in other words, I was at a minus 2% original design slope, cross slope. And then around where this vector geometry for these turn lanes begins, we start flattening to a minus 0.5%. That, let's just assume that was the original design. So from the end of this geometry to the end of this geometry through the intersection, it should be at a full minus 0.5%. Let's just pretend. Now it wasn't this, the survey surface here does not show that. We're just gonna pretend that was the original intention. And then between the end of this geometry to somewhere around 769, we had a transition slope where we went from the minus 0.5 back to the full crown or full normal crown of minus 2% for the rest of the way. Well, as you saw, if I type in an ideal slope of minus 2%, it tries to apply that through all of the stations. So my slope tolerance really wouldn't do me any good in this area because I would be trying to stay close to the existing and when my existing ground that it computes moved up to around minus 0.5, that original design intent, my corrected slope, it would be a 2% slope tolerance and it would see a lot of problems that it probably really didn't have. Because again, I could only place one ideal slope of minus 2%. So the goal today is to show how I can place my own new design or new overlay super elevation slopes and have that be the ideal slope. In other words, have that slope varying through this area. First of all, I'm gonna to go to my alignment itself, select it and go to alignment properties. Remember, I have to have a design speed to place super elevation. Now I've already placed my super elevation. Notice with my alignment still selected, I can go to super elevation view tabular editor. So I placed a custom curve or user defined curve to represent super elevation through this intersection, even though there really wasn't a curve. Now, if you're interested in this topic, I'll place another link in the description to my co-bloggers video on doing that. So Jeff Bartles did a video showing exactly how to place user defined super elevation on a tangent. So I'm not showing that today, but you can take a look at that video and you can see my stations. I'm at a minus 2%. As I get in the intersection, I'm at a full minus 0.5% in that area. And then here's where that ends that minus full 5%. And then we transition from 76650 between there and 769, we transition from minus 0.5 back to that minus two normal crown. But how do I get that into my ideal slope, what it should be, not my 2%? Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna select the corridor again by right clicking, go to select, and I'm going to select edit corridor, rehab corridor rather. We only have one region, so I'm just gonna select pick a region and it'll go straight into the rehab corridor tool. So to update this with our super elevation parameters, the first thing we're gonna do is down on the rehab input under the use super elevation command, we're going to select yes. And then at the top here under the lane properties, I'm gonna start with my left lane, left lane one. 
And for the overlay slope, I'm going to say use the outside lane super elevation because I placed that super, that custom super in the outside lane slot. If you put it in the inside lane slot, you need to select inside here. I'm going to flip to the right lane now because the default in this case was inside lane slope. So now they're both set to that same parameter. We're not going to change anything else. We're going to leave everything else the same and we're going to hit apply. Okay, I'm going directly to my rehab manager so I can see my report. And let's take a look at my ideal slope first, the second column. So it starts at a minus 0.5. That's what it should be because where this starts, remember, if I move this up, and we'll take a look at plan view. So my corridor starts here. You can see the black marker here indicating my position in plan and in profile. You can see it in profile as well. But remember, at that station, I should be at that minus 0.5% full flattened intersection slope and it is and so you can watch as I move ahead what the slope is now at the end of that vector geometry there indicating the turn lane you should see this start moving towards the minus two and it does notice that super is linearly transitioning to eventually a minus two percent at 769 which was exactly what my super told it to do just so you're clear the surveyed surface was really flattened in the intersection this EG slope here would be around minus 0.5. And so the slope tolerance would work exactly the way it should through this entire zone. And I'll move ahead to see if I had any problems because I'm out of that fairly quickly. And nowhere else where I had a 2% slope did my slope tolerance need to change anything because I have no yellow or red warnings here. And then we could review the milling leveling to see how our depths of milling and overlay worked out. So the goal today was to show how to apply super elevation to your rehab corridor routine. I hope this has been beneficial. Have a great day.